morning, precious people of God, and welcome to another broadcast of the Word of God and um, some singing from my home. Uh, I'm Pastor Pollard, pastor of Fort Washington Baptist Church. So delighted to be with you another Sunday morning. The Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Thank you so much for joining me today um, as I share with you what the Lord has um, blessed me to be able to provide. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> and then let me have a, a word of prayer with you. And then um, I've invited uh, Deacon Timmons and his darling bride, Sister Juanita Timmons, to share with us a song this morning. And they provided two, one which we'll share at the beginning of our service and one which we'll share in the back end. So let's have a word of prayer and then let them minister to our hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the precious privilege to rise once again on this side of heaven. Thank you for a portion of health and strength. Thank you for watching over us and for keeping us. Thank you for your love and your concern for each one of us. You are merciful and caring and loving and we can't Thank you enough for all that you do for us. Today, let the message and the songs minister to all who will listen in. I pray that every heart would be greatly encouraged. We love you and we praise you, Lord. And thank you in advance for the word which shall be shared. In Jesus' name, amen. Do me a favor, would you please? Make sure you press the share button on your Facebook page so others can be blessed by what will take place this morning. Let's hear from Deacon Timmons and Sister Juanita Timmons. God bless your hearts. Gracious God, our Father, our world needs you right now. Each one of us, one by one and collectively, more than anything, we need you. Thank you so much, Lord, for the word of God, which reminds us that at all times you promised you would never leave us, you'd never forsake us. Our trust, our faith, is in you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Again, welcome um, and thank you so much for joining me on this Sunday morning that the Lord has made. Welcome to those who are joining on our conference call um, and to you who are watching via Facebook. And make sure again that you share the message with uh, family and friends by just pressing share on your Facebook page. Good morning, each of you. Um, I greet you in the praiseworthy name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you for blessing me with your presence. And I pray that this message today would encourage each of your hearts. Today's message is the 10th message from Peter's letter to suffering saints in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia in a series that I've titled Encouraging Encouragement for Suffering Saints. In chapter 2, uh, where we started a few weeks back, Peter encouraged saints, telling them that they were called to become like Christ in verses 21 through 25 of chapter 2. Since none of us are inherently like Christ, to become like Christ, several things have to happen. First, saints are called to grow. How? Through letting go of all behavior that's nothing like Christ. And then, through longing for the pure milk of the word. We saw that in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Also, to become like Christ. Saints are called to give God access to their lives. That's in chapter 2, verses 4, down through verse number 8. Uh, to do this, to give God access, I showed you first that saints must come to Jesus. How? By receiving Jesus and see Jesus as precious and of great value, the very way that God does. If we are in Christ, each one of us have had to have had that moment when we had a come to Jesus experience. For some of us, we came to Jesus through a trial, through a difficulty, maybe a sickness, maybe an accident, maybe through going through difficult moment in a marriage or in some other relationship, maybe even in a car accident at some near-death experience. We each have had a moment that we're in Christ that we had a come to Jesus moment. And then secondly, if we're going to give God access to our lives, not only must we come to Jesus, once we get there, saints must yield completely to God. Why? So that God could use us as living stones to build a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. For what reason? So that we can offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. What kind of sacrifices are spiritual? Sacrifices like praise to God in spite of trial. Sacrifices like living an obedient and holy life. Sacrifices like loving one another in spite of one another. Sacrifices like sharing the word of God with those who have not heard and with those who need encouragement from it. Sacrifices like putting away evil even when the flesh is craving the evil. Sacrifices like abstaining from lust submitting to authorities, and following the example of Christ. Sacrifices like a wife submitting to her precious husband and a husband being understanding of his wife, not returning evil for evil, but instead giving a blessing. And sacrifices like using your gifts to serve one another. Sacrifices like sharing in the sufferings of Christ, and as a pastor, shepherding the flock of God with eagerness, not just to get money, but even voluntarily. Every aspect 
of a saint's life can be lived as a sacrificial offering to God. There is no area of your life that you can not offer up to God as a sacrifice. God, anything and everything I do as a father, as a husband, as a pastor, as a man of God, as a Christian, as a brother of older brothers, as a brother of a sister, as a friend of friends, as an employee, as a co-worker, every single aspect of my life and every relationship of my life, both with others and personally, I offer it up to you, God, as a sacrifice. Help me to make every area of my life acceptable to God as an offering. William McDowell, I love when he sings this song. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Rome saying, I urge you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies. That's all of you, your whole life, everything you are. Present a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And once your mind is renewed, then every area of your life can now be ordered according to the acceptable will of God. And you can present your whole body as an offering to God, a sacrificial offering. Lord, I lay my whole life down to you that you can use me however you want to use me. Yield yourselves completely to God so he can make you a part of a holy priesthood so that you and I can offer up sacrifices to God. To give God access to your life, not only must we come to Jesus, and not only must we yield to our lives to him, but thirdly, I shared with you, you must believe the scriptures concerning God and Christ. What should we believe? That God sent Jesus a choice stone, a precious cornerstone to Zion, that's Jerusalem. And that he, the one who believes in him, will never be disappointed. That's in 2 and 6 of 1 Peter. Fourthly, I told you, not only must you come to Jesus and yield to Jesus and believe the scriptures concerning God and Christ, then lastly, we must obey the scriptures. Concerning who? Concerning the Lord Jesus. In verses 7 through 8, of chapter 2. The word commands us to believe in Jesus and also to obey him. Those who disbelieve also disobey the very word and as a result of their disobedience they stumble. That is they fall into sin at verse number 8 of chapter number 2. Those who disbelieve also disobey and stumble, fall into sin. Peter writes at verse number 8, they were appointed to this doom, appointed by God to fall into sin because they are disobedient to the word commanding us to believe in Christ. The moment you disbelieve in Christ, you disobey the word and you stumble. You fall into sin. This is the appointment by God of everyone who refuses to believe in Jesus. Give God access to your life. Come to Jesus. Yield to God. Believe and obey the scriptures.
scriptures. And you will never be disappointed. And everything God wants to do with you will be realized in your life. There may be people that today you regret have ever given them access to your life. But I guarantee you this, you'll never regret giving the Lord complete access to every part of your life. He will bless your life and every aspect of your life. Take every area of your life and you look at it and you say, Lord, I offer this up to you. I offer this up to you. I give you my marriage. I give you my friendships. I give you my relationship as an employee with my employers on my job. I give you my personal life. I give you my private time. I offer you my finances. I offer you how I deal with my children as a parent. I offer you every aspect of my life. I offer up my health to you. That I would even be a steward of my health according to the will of God. I offer you my mind. I give you my mouth. I give you my hands. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Everything that I am, I yield it completely to you. And I open my mind and my heart that you might speak to me. So that I order every aspect of my life in accordance to your will. I give my whole self to you as a living sacrifice. That I might become more and more like my Jesus. Praise God. So summary now, here's what I've told you so far. That saints are called to grow. Say amen to that. Amen. And then saints are called to give God access to their lives. You know, you know, you know, um, you know, we, we have a security system at our house. We have a security system on our car. Because there are people we do not want to get in our car. And there are people we do not want to get in our house. We have a security system at Fort Washington Baptist Church. When we're not there, we don't want someone entering who has no right to be there. We've got security systems set up all over the place. Right now, if you don't have a face mask, you can't get into a store. It's a security system. But here's the one you want to remove all security systems to. You want to remove all security from blocking God getting in your life. You want nothing to block the Lord from having access to every area of your life. Your marriage, your mind, your home, your health, your finances, your parenting, every area of your life. God, I remove anything that hinders you from coming in and using me in this areas of my life in a way that glorifies you. You have access to all of me and every area of my life that I might become all that you want me to be. Glory be to God. Give them access. Start today. Remove all barriers. Remove all hindrances. Take away all security. Let God want to be vulnerable to nobody else. You might want to be closed up to a whole lot of the people. You don't want some folk coming in your life, but God, open the door. Let him come in and do everything he wants to do in your life. Give him complete access. Deny him no entry point. Deny him nothing in your life, but offer it all to God that you might offer those things up as a sacrifice to our Savior. And then there's a third area that we're called, and, 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 um, and, and this is all we're going to deal with today. This is the third area, and that is that saints are called to grow, to give God access, to gratefully proclaim the excellencies of our God. At, at verse number 9 and 10, what is there for saints to be grateful for in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10? Um, what is there for saints to be grateful for? First, saints are a chosen yenos, a chosen race. At verse 9, uh, Peter writes, but you are a chosen race. 
a chosen generation is another translation or a chosen people or a chosen nation or even a chosen family at verse number nine but you are chosen God chose us males and females black and white Hispanic and Asian Jew and Gentile people of many tongues many ethnic groups God chose us to be in his family he would be our father back in chapter 1 verse 17 of this letter we would be his children back in chapter 1 verse 14 of this letter Christ would be our elder brother according to chapter 1 we were chosen by the foreknowledge of God that is before we ever knew God God knew us and God chose us by the sanctifying work of the spirit the spirit of God moved upon us set us apart for what reason to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood so that you and I can experience all the benefits of God's covenant with his people through Christ Jesus. This, this has been fulfilled. God is fulfilling plans made for those he has chosen. We've got a reason to be grateful because God is fulfilling plans for those he has chosen. We were chosen to be born again. That's being fulfilled so we can obtain an inheritance as his children. That shall be fulfilled. The inheritance is already prepared. That's fulfilled. An inheritance is for one's children. Those in the family. We are a chosen family. God chose us to be in the family so that as his children, he could give his children an inheritance. What do you got to be grateful for? That God is fulfilling plans that he has made for those he has chosen. He's fulfilling those plans. After Christ returned to glory, Peter, preaching this glorious gospel only to Jews, had a revelation that changed his life. He misunderstood, Peter did, the salvation message, believing initially it was only for the Jews. Through a vision in which he was told to preach the Gentiles. And through witnessing God pour out his spirit on them in Acts chapter 10, Peter realized that God is not one to show partiality, but in every nation, those who fear him and do what's right is welcome to him, Acts chapter 10. Because of this revelation, Peter, now looking at the scripture with a new mind and new eyes, he grew, came to understand that Gentiles were included in the promises that God made to Israel. He didn't see this initially, but then through that vision and see, through, through seeing the Spirit poured out on Gentiles, he came to realize that Gentiles were always included in the plans of God. So then Peter wrote this letter to Jewish and Gentile Christians saying to Jewish and Gentile Christians in chapter 2 and verse 9, you are a chosen race. You are a chosen generation. You are a chosen nation. You are a chosen family. Where did he get this from? He directly quotes from the Old Testament and now see that promises made to Israel included both Jew and Gentile. In Deuteronomy 7 and 6, I need to read that to you. In Deuteronomy 7 and 6, remember we just read, he said you're a chosen race. In Deuteronomy 7 and 6, here's what uh, God gives Moses to say to Israel. At 7 and 6, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession 
out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any of the peoples for you were the fewest of all peoples. But because the Lord loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers, the Lord brought you out by a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Moses tells Israel that they are holy, they are set apart, a people set apart for God. God chose them out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth, chose them to be his own possession. The Lord did not choose them because of anything that was in them. There was no quality that merited them being chosen by God, but God chose them because he loved them. And God kept the promise that he made to the forefathers, starting with Abraham and the Isaac and the Jacob. He told Abraham, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing from your loins. is going to come a multitude of nations. God says this to Abraham. God fulfilled the promise. Peter now, looking back at this verse, realizes that this verse is fulfilled through Jew and Gentile in Christ Jesus. That we're the holy people of God. We're the chosen people of God. We're God's possession. We're the ones. He did not choose us because of any qualities that are in us, but because of his love for us. He chooses us. He has chosen us. And in Deuteronomy chapter number 14, look what P um, Moses says again. In Deuteronomy 14 at verse 2. Deuteronomy 14 at verse 2. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his own possession. Out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Back in 1 Peter. But you are a chosen race, a chosen generation. God chose us. Not because of anything we've done. But because of his great love. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to merit it. It's because of the heart of God we have been chosen. Peter looked back at the Old Testament and sees that the promises made to Israel are fulfilled through Christ Jesus, not just for Jews, but for Jews and Gentiles. Our sins have been forgiven through the sacrifice of Christ. And... Let me back up. Here's the second thing. We, we are a chosen race. But look back at verse 9. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. In 2 and 5 of 1 Peter, Peter calls us a holy priesthood. In 2 and 9, he calls us, calls us a royal priesthood. In 2 and 5, a holy priesthood. In the Old Testament, only the Levites could serve as priests, offering up sacrifices to God. Before they could serve, their sins had to be forgiven through a sacrifice. And they had to be sprinkled with the blood of the sacrifice in order to consecrate them for their service. Peter wrote that the saints are now priests. Not just Levites are priests, but the saints are. In the Old Testament, the Levites had to be forgiven. In the New Testament, the saints are forgiven. In the Old Testament, they were forgiven through a sacrifice. In the New Testament, we're forgiven through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. In the Old Testament, they had to be sprinkled with the blood of the sacrifice to be consecrated. In the New Testament, we were sprinkled with the blood of Christ in chapter number one. In the Old Testament, we did not have access to God without a priest. Now we are the priests who can commune in the presence of God. We're a holy, consecrated, set-apart priesthood. We've got reasons to be grateful. Not only are we a holy priesthood, but we also are a royal 
priesthood in chapter 2 and 9. God is a king with a kingdom. He's royalty. He's regal. He's kingly. We're a chosen race, a chosen family. We're the king's kids. That makes us royalty, regal, kingly. We're not only a holy priesthood set apart, we're a royal priesthood. Our priesthood is what we do. We offer up sacrifices. Our royalty is who we are. We are the children of the king. We must never forget, you and I, that we are royalty. And what we're called to do is offer up spiritual sacrifices. Don't forget who you are, your royalty, or what you're called to do, offer up spiritual sacrifices. We've got reasons to be grateful. And then he writes here, he writes, uh, you are a holy nation at verse 9. And then he writes, a people for God's own possession. At verse number 9, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Peter again draws from the Old Testament. Go back to Exodus 19 and watch this. Exodus 19. He says we are a holy nation. Exodus 19. And look at verse number 1. In the third month, after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness, wilderness of Sinai. When they set out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. And there Israel camped in front of the mountain. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings. And brought you to myself. Watch this. Now then. They've just come out of Egypt. Now then. If you will indeed obey my voice. And keep my covenant. Then you shall be my own possession. Among all the peoples. For all the earth is mine. God tells Israel. Of all the people in the earth. I've chosen you to be my own possession. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the sons of Israel. This is what God tells Moses right when they come out of bondage to speak to Israel. Their bondage in Israel represented death, represented sin, represented darkness. And when they came through the Red Sea, that was like passing through death into the promised land, going into a new life. God is telling them, now that you've come out of death and darkness, you're now going to serve me as my priest, a holy nation. This is what God tells Moses to tell Israel right after they come out of bondage. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 7, watch this. Deuteronomy 7 at verse 6. Deuteronomy 7, watch this. Deuteronomy 7 at verse 6. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And then at verse number, of uh, Deuteronomy 26, at verse 18, 26 and 18, watch this. He says, and the Lord has today declared you to be his people. A treasured possession as he promised you and that you should keep all his commandments that's the obedience and that he shall set you high above all the nations which is made for praise fame and honor 
and that you shall be a consecrated people to the Lord your God as he has spoken. Peter understood that the words God commanded Moses to speak to Israel are fulfilled through Christ Jesus for everyone who is in Christ. We are God's own possession, chosen from among all humanity, a holy nation within the nation. That's not so holy. We're holy priests, royalty mixed in with humanity. The world may not know who we are when they're dealing with us, but don't you ever forget who you are when you're dealing with the world. We're not to be like everyone else. We ought to be like our father and our elder brother Jesus. You're not like everyone else. You're royalty. God is your father. Jesus is your brother. You're an heir to a glorious inheritance. You're a priest set apart by God, consecrated to do ministry, to commune with God, to offer up sacrifice, to be as he is. A people, a holy nation, God's own possession out of all the peoples on the earth in the midst of their suffering with people dying. Peter wanted them all to know they had something to be grateful for. And in their suffering, he tells them to do something. He tells them that you have been called, chosen race, royal priesthood, holy nation, for God's possession, that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Proclaim the excellencies the moral excellencies, the goodness, the redemptive acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Peter says, look, people are dying. You're being persecuted. People are suffering in ways they never imagined. But listen, when you think about what God has done, you've got a reason to proclaim his excellencies. He may not have stopped the struggle, may not have stopped the pain, may not have stopped the suffering, but you've got a reason to give him praise. Which of us has the capacity to proclaim all the moral excellencies, all the goodness, all the redemptive acts of God? Listen to the excellent things he has done. He called us out of darkness, sin, ignorance, and death into the marvelous light of life and knowledge and hope and joy and peace. Excellent. We are now a chosen race. He chose us. Excellent. He made us a royal priesthood. Excellent. He made us a holy nation. Excellent. He made us a people for his own possession. Excellent. In verse 10, for you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Excellent. We had not received mercy, but now we receive mercy. Excellent. He made us living stones, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Excellent. He chose us before we knew him to obey Jesus and be sprinkled with his blood. Excellent. He caused us to be born again so we can receive a glorious inheritance. Excellent. He proves our faith so we can obtain salvation. Excellent. He chose people to preach the gospel to us so we would have faith in the glorious redemptive work of Christ. Excellent. He calls us his children, commanding us to be as he is. Excellent. He redeemed us, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of the lamb, unblemished and unspotless, the blood of Christ. Excellent, 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 excellent. Oh, Lord, how excellent is thy name. There is none like you, none like you. Excellent is thy name, you and I have been called to gratefully, joyously, enthusiastically, 
Hopefully. of him who found us, called us, rescued us, picked us up, cleaned us up, washed us up, turned us around, brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. How excellent is our God to find in us something worth saving, something worth redeeming, that you and I might be the voices in this nation, in an unholy nation, to be the voices to cry out, there is none like him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing us to be your own possession, your priests, your holy nation, your family, so we can get a glorious inheritance. Glory to his name. Let's have a word of prayer. Most gracious God, our Father, Thank you so much for choosing us to be your people out of all the peoples upon the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we shall proclaim your excellencies in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear from Sister Juanita and Deacon Timmons one more time. accept and believe on him that he came into this world wrapped in flesh and blood for your sins and my sins he died on the cross that you and I could be spared the wrath of God he took that wrath upon himself so you just lift up your eyes to heaven and open your heart to the Lord you come to Jesus and you say Lord I want you to be my savior and Lord of my life I lay my life down before you. Please forgive me of my sin. Pardon my iniquity. Have mercy on my soul. Write my name in the book of life. Allow me to be one of those living stones on that spiritual house you're building that I too might be a holy priest who can offer up acceptable sacrifices to you. Make me a part of your family, your precious possession in the earth that I too might proclaim the excellencies of him who brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Thank you so much for joining today with this broadcast. If you'd like to bless Fort Washington Baptist Church with a love gift, you certainly can do so by going to our webpage, looking at our link for Givelify, and you can give whatever the Lord places in your heart to give today. You have blessed my soul today by your presence. 
Thank you for allowing me to share the word of God with you. Uh, my hope is that your heart was encouraged and that as you think about your own suffering and your trials and your difficulties, in the midst of that thinking on those things, you will remember all the reasons you have to be grateful, to proclaim the excellencies of him who brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. You're one of his family, and there's an inheritance waiting just for you. You are not like the world. You're a nation within a nation, a holy nation within the nation. You are not like everyone else. They don't know who you are, but he does. And so you must not treat them as they treat you, nor should you live like them, but live like your father and your elder brother, Jesus Christ. Christ. I love you. Thank you for joining with me today. Preferably, you'll be able to join with me again on Wednesday for our Equipping Disciples class. It's a great study. And preferably, you'll share today's message with somebody who needs a word of encouragement. You bless my heart today. May the Lord keep you. May heaven smile upon you. You've been a blessing. Take care now.